Hallelujah. What we need to remember, family, is that there is either a fragrance of defeat or a fragrance of victory in every single person. So you, you give off a fragrance. How do you speak gives off a fragrance. Your attitude gives off a fragrance. How you respond to situations, circumstances, all of these things give off a fragrance. And so tonight, as we talk about the fragrance of Christ, we're actually talking about the fragrance of Christ, the Christos, the anointing. So when we talk about Christ, we're not only talking about Jesus the Christ, we're talking about you. We're talking about the fragrance that you give off. So this message is to encourage you to focus on the fragrance that you give off as you respond and deal with situations. So as I said at the beginning, that there is either a fra fragrance of defeat in every person and a fragrance of victory in every person. And the more you get to know the word, the greater the, the scent, the scent of your victory is, right? So the greater you, the more you know the word, the greater your sense of victory is or the scent of victory is. And so when you face challenges, when you face circumstances, when you face a roadblock, when you're chasing after a dream and you're facing challenges while you're on the journey towards your dream, towards your goals, what happens is the moment that roadblock comes, many people, because they don't spend time getting into the promises of God, they begin to feel defeated, they feel despondent, and with that despondency and with that feeling of, of I've lost everything comes the fragrance of a person who has failed or a failure, the fragrance of a failure, fragrance of a defeated person. So our aim is to encourage you, encourage the listener that each and every one of you will never give off the scent of fear, the scent of defeat, the scent of a loser. So I want you to say this, or you can type it out. I am not a failure. I am not a loser. And I will not be defeated. I'm not a failure. I'm not a failure. I'm not a loser. I'm not a loser. And I will not be defeated. I will not be defeated. Let's try that again. I'm not a... Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, you say it, then I will repeat. <laughs> I'm not a failure. Failure. I'm not a, loser, not a loser and I will not be defeated. I will not be defeated. See, straight away, the moment you make those positive confessions, you give off the scent, the fragrance of a victor. You give off a fragrance or you give off the fragrance of a victor. So I am not, a, uh, I'm, I will not be defeated. I refuse to go down. I refuse to back off. I refuse to regress because I know the promises of God. And if God has given me a promise and God has called me to fulfill His plan, then I am going to make sure that I do not back off or back away from what the Lord my God has called me to do. Now, if you if you are there in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1 to 2, praise God. If you're not there, well, you may as well just sit back and listen. <laughs> All right, Ephesians chapter 5, go on. Would you read verse 1 and 2? Therefore, be imitators and followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Hallelujah. So, therefore, be imitators. Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, he's encouraging the church at Ephesus, and he's saying to them, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Meaning that, when you imitate God, you are what? A follower of God. When you're imitating God, you're a follower of God as dear children. So as dear children, it means as a child that is the father's favorite. As a child that is a special hand-picked out of everybody. So every one of you watching, every one of you listening, you are God's favorite. Doesn't that make you happy? You are God's favorite. So. My mom used to, my dad used to tell my mom that all the time. No wonder my mom actually burst his bubble and said, God doesn't have favorites. <laughs> <laughs> well, God <laughs> thinks that every single one of you are his favorite. Every single one of you are God's favorite. And so we are God's favorite. We are God's dear children. So be followers of God as God's special child. It's like our children as they're growing up and our little daughter, would see mommy's shoes and even today she goes and slips her feet into mommy's shoes and she walks around like she's mommy my son used to do that put his feet into my shoes i mean they still do it now 
and they walk around like like it's uh, like they are daddy or they are mummy. Now you can so, see the next one. Now, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now they imitate mummy. Uh, you know, on the keyboard, they, they, you know, she's very forced on the keyboard as she's uh, uh, working, and so the kids pick that up and they do exactly the same. They want to imitate their parents because they admire the parents. They have an admiration. So the word of God is saying that you are to imitate, be followers of God as dear children, as an affectionate child of Abba Father. You need to imitate God. So I want you to say this or type this out. I am God's favorite child. I am God's favorite child. So if you're God's favorite child, then follow in his footsteps. Do exactly what the Lord God would expect you to do because he's your Abba Father. He expects you to be obedient to his word. He expects you to have communication with him no matter what you go through. He expects you to give off a fragrance of a victor because he wants you to know that no matter what you go through, yes, you watching, no matter what you go through, remind yourself that I will not fail. I will not be defeated. I'm going to give off the fragrance of a victor because God is on my side. I'm going to give off the fragrance of somebody who is an overcomer because my father loves me and he cares about my future. He cares about where I am. He cares about what I go through. So I'm not going to allow the enemy to make me feel defeated and give off a fragrance of defeat. I love my God. I'm God's favorite child. So I'm going to give off a fragrance of a victor. I'm going to give off a fragrance as if my daddy is right with me wherever I go. See, when you walk with your dad, your dad is going to protect you. He's going to make sure no harm comes to you. He's going to keep his, his eye on you all the time. So your dad, because he loves you, he loves his children, he's never going to turn his back on you. You might go through tragedy. You might go through pain. You might go through seasons of loneliness. You might go through seasons of isolation. You might go through seasons of rejection, depression, whatever it is. Remind yourself in the midst of a crisis or the midst of a storm that your daddy loves you too much to leave you where you are. Your daddy loves you incredibly. Incre you are just so incredible to God. Would you write that down? I am so incredible to God. Would you say that? I am so incredible to God. I am God's incredible. I am God's incredible because God loves me. He thinks, he thinks I'm just so amazing. My God thinks you're amazing. Your dad thinks you're amazing. That's why the word says we can come into the throne of grace and call him Abba Father, meaning that you are my dear, dear, dear dad. You, I'm so, I feel so affectionate about you, dad. And when you give off that fragrance, you catch his attention. When you give off that fragrance, you catch his attention. So therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Then it goes on to say, and verse number two. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Now watch this. That word walk is a Greek word peripateo. Peripateo means walk in the path that has been created Walk in a path that you have become so familiar with. Walk in the path that you know, even if you're blindfolded, you know exactly which route to take. Now, go on, you want to say? <laughs> that means you got to be in the Word. you got to be in the Word. And, and All right. Yes, oh, okay. you got to be in the Word. Peripateo. Walk in familiar territory. That's what it means. Walk in familiar territory, like, like, like your home. You know exactly where the furniture is, right? There's a lot of unfamiliar things on the floor. There might be unfamiliar <laughs> when you have two kids. There might be unfamiliar things on the floor that catch you by surprise. <laughs> but walk in such a way that you are familiar with the territory of love. Walk in agape love. Peripateo in agape love. In other words, walk the pathway that has been created for you so that you will not lose your foot, you will not dash your foot, but you walk in the same place, the same pathway. It's kind of like this. If you see a field with long grass and there's a pathway through the field that people have created by just walking through, by just treading through that field, You'll notice that, that, that where they walked is what? A pathway. Mm. The grass flattens out. The grass probably dies. 
And so what happens is it creates a pathway that is familiar to you or that you are familiar with. And so when you recognize that pathway, walk in love, walk in the peripateo, walk in the same vicinity that Christ has walked in. Because Christ has loved you, the anointed one has loved you. And he has done what? Given himself for us. See, Jesus Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. And this is something we all know. We are familiar with the fact that Jesus Christ was our ultimate sacrifice. And he was an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. If you understand the, the, the tabernacle, right? The outer court, what's, what's in the outer court? You have the altar of sacrifice. And so you have the bronze laver where you wash. So the altar of sacrifice is where the priest will put the sacrifice, the, the animal that we sacrificed unto God. And that sacrifice will come up as a fragrance of sacrifice for the, for, for the sins. And so that sacrifice will be put there. But because it was a messy place, the priest will have to go to the bronze laver and they would have to wash. And before they enter the middle court, they would have to be cleansed from all of the blood of the animal that they had to kill. So when you think about Jesus as the sacrifice, his blood was shed on the outer court. His blood was different because in the old days, the blood was to cover the sin. In the New Testament, Jesus's blood was to wipe away, mm. blot out. So there's nothing standing in the way. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Nothing is standing in the way. So walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a sweet smelling aroma. So what kind of victor are you? Are you the kind of victor that wavers? Are you the kind of Christian that wavers in times of storms and troubles? Or are you the kind of Christian that no matter what comes your way, you're going to stand strong and say, I know my God has got my back. I'm going to give up the fragrance of a victor because that's the only thing heaven knows. Mm. Does heaven know defeat? Does heaven know failure? There are no failures in heaven. There are victors in heaven. If somebody has passed on and they are on the grandstands of heaven, they have not failed in this life. They are victors. They are in the presence of the King. They are saints. They are in the presence of the Lord God, our Abba Father. And so they are victorious. They have entered into eternity and they are there in a place of victory. So heaven knows no defeat. Heaven knows no defeat. That's why you're called a dear child of God. Would you say this? I see it says, therefore, what's the verse one, Ephesians chapter five. Therefore be imitators or followers of God as dear children. Right. So be followers, imitators of God as dear children. So I am a dear children. Would you say that I am part of God's dear children? I am part of God's dear children. So I am special to God. God will go out of his way if you give off the fragrance of Christ, because even when Christ was on the cross, he was not defeated. Even when Christ was in the tomb, he was not defeated because he rose again. So Jesus Christ, the Christos, the anointed one, he, he laid himself down for us as an offering and a sac sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma, a sweet scent that is unto God. So every time you come to God through Jesus Christ, there's a fragrance that goes up and your prayers are mingled in the fragrance of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Isn't that powerful? Your prayers are mingled in the fragrance of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So all your prayers are mingled in that sacrifice. All your what else? Your praise, worship. your worship, everything. everything. What about your words? What are you saying? What are you saying? How important are our words to give up the beautiful fragrance of Christ? Our positive words go straight out, just like the smoke in the, um, in the holy place. The smoke was going up on a black column, they right. explain it, because that was when God accepted the, the prayers. Now, same way our words go up. Every time we speak something, even in the worst of the storms, we're happy, we say positive things, our words go up, and it honors and glorifies God. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because as long as you know you are in God's will, you are in God's plan, you know that because of Christ, that I am so dear to God. Because of Christ, He will never leave you nor forsake you. Because of Christ, He has paid the price for you. So therefore, you should not ever doubt the love of God. The love of your Father should never be doubted. See, even when you go through challenges, the love of your Father should not be doubted. You should understand that God loves you. And no matter what you, where you are right now, He's going to take you through. He's going to bring you out. And His name is going to be glorified through His child. See, saints, you carry the DNA, the royal DNA, the holy DNA of the crystals. You carry the bloodline, not of the generations of curses and, and things that have been let down and early deaths and, and sickness and disease. You carry the DNA of a holy blood, Christ's holy blood, pure blood. And so because you carry the pure blood of Jesus Christ, you are special and there's an aroma and there, there is a fragrance. Now we are encouraged to follow God as the highest standard for our lives. Is there any other standard that's higher than God? There is no other standard that's higher than God. There is no other standard that is higher than God. And just as a child would follow a father, so Jesus is our perfect example. And when we look at Christ, we see the Father. When we look at the Father, we see the Christos, Jesus. We when see, they look at us, they're supposed to see Jesus. They're supposed to see Jesus. So when they look at us, when people look at us, they should see Jesus. So when you speak <laughs> negative, you don't see Jesus. Exactly. You don't hear Him. No. So what should we do? I think you actually dishonor Him. Because He's given you all the things you need to go through every situation. Absolutely. And the worst thing we can do is say negative words. And for me personally, it's like I'm insulting God. Right. Because the Word says He never lies and He's proven so many times to us every, over everything that we always come out mm -hmm. like the Word says. Absolutely. And sometimes we fall and we doubt things and we just start speaking negative. So we got to watch what we say. We're going to make sure that the words that come out of our lips are the words that, is, that, are, that, that form as part of the fragrance that God, our Father, is pleased with. So if Jesus wouldn't say it, we should not be saying it. Oh, that's good. That's an imitator. Because yeah. you imitate exactly what God says. So what Jesus said, I mean, if you look through the whole thing of the cross, everything Jesus went through, He never said anything negative. Right. He always kept quiet and he maintained his character. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And the same way, I think we should always think, would Jesus have said this or would Jesus have done that? Because mm. it's so easy when we face challenges and things and you get a bit of a frightening and natural, it's fine. We all go through it, but watch the words that you say. And just imagine Jesus, Jesus is always with you through mm. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we shouldn't be worrying about anything because we still get the answers. We still get the confirmation. Right. That God knows we are in the middle of the storm, but He's always with us. Absolutely. So God is always with us in the storm. Yeah. And, and you, through the storm. And through the storm, <laughs> yes. When you start the storm until the end of the storm, He's always there, He never leaves. Because yeah. you, you were not designed to live in the storm. Yeah. You were designed to go through the storm. Or like we say, to go camping in the middle of the storm. That's and when right. you go camping, that's when you speak negative and you cry and you sulk and you carry on about the same problem over and over and over again. <laughs> That's when you're setting up camp in the middle of your storm. <laughs> so, if you had to send me camping, I would be, I would be hopeless in camping. Uh, hopeless in the sense that it's not my style. I would complain. I would grumble. I would not be a happy camper in the middle of the campsite. I don't like camp. You know what you're missing. I, don't, I know what. <laughs> I know what I'm missing and I'm happy. <laughs> but but this wife of mine loves camping. She loves the bush. Listen, wherever I go, whenever we go out of break, this break, a part of my vanity case with my with my perfumes and, and my whatever, right? My hair gel, my perfumes, my my foundation. <laughs> I have to. Part of my routine is to always carry a can of doom. Right? Because I don't like bugs. 
I don't like anything crawling in my room. I don't like cobwebs. I just want everything to be clean and spotless. So I carry my own kind of stuff. I carry my own <laughs> detergents to make sure the toilet is clean. The rest food. of the family carries food for all the animals. Yes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the kids are begging me for a dog. But they got to be imitators of the father, <laughs> not the mother. The Bible doesn't say be imitators of the mother. It says be imitators of God as the angel. Why we say we are one? <laughs> so you so, <laughs> so they all, all the time, Daddy, can I have a cat? Daddy, can I, can I have a dog? Goodness gracious. But I would not be a happy camper. It's not where I want to be. If I have to go on a camp, you know, if I'm forced to go on a camp, I would go. But that is if I'm forced to. But I would be well equipped. So don't tell me don't kill the animals or don't kill the bugs. I will kill the bugs. See, at least Vanessa says she loves camping. She, you don't know what you miss because there's no technology. Vanessa already. <laughs> Where I used to go camp, there was no technology. Oh man. That's the best thing on the earth because it's only nature and you can hear God. Oh Jesus. I like five star. That's my style and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I don't think there's any campsites in heaven. <laughs> you are glamping. <laughs> That's Sally and I do. I'm glamping. Yeah, glamping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so we are encouraged, family, to follow God as the highest standard, because Jesus was the ultimate example of love, as He gave Himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice. Right. So, so please say Amen about uh, about that, because Jesus gave Himself as a sacrifice, as an offering. Now, let's read that that first principle. The one in yellow. Yeah. Okay. When your offering is a sacrifice in the middle of a crisis, it becomes a sweet fragrance of Christ in the presence of God. Let's say that again. When your offering is a sacrifice in the middle of a crisis, it becomes the sweet fragrance of Christ in the presence of God. Family, listen to me. There were times that you don't even realize that your offering to God is a sacrifice. It's a sacrificial offering. You don't realize, you see, when we talk about offering, many people just think about money. There are times when you're going through a financial crisis that, yes, you need to sow a seed. But there are times when you don't even have a seed to sow financially, right? You will have no money to sow. What do you do? You sow your praise. You sow your worship. And in times when you don't feel like praising God and you don't feel like worshiping God, there are times that your worship unto God, even when you say, God, I just don't know what to do anymore. I don't even have any praise in me. I don't even have any worship, but I will just lift my hands and just give you some worship. I, will, you know, I don't know have any words. But that's something that I've learned along the last past two years. That There are times that I know I need to get up because Holy Spirit won't let you sleep. He <laughs> makes sure that you get up. Right. So I will just sit and I really, I do not feel like praying because I'm really dealing with a lot of things. But then I will just have this word in my mind and then I'll go onto YouTube and I'll look for worship songs with that word in it. Mm -hmm. And it's so amazing how God, His grace and His love is just so amazing because He will talk to you through the worship song. Yeah. Now, I like a worship song and like to literally pull out the entire song upside down. So every... Every sentence I will go and find a scripture in the Word of God for because that's how God a lot of times in my midnight hours He speaks to me when you're sleeping. Right. And um, that's what's so amazing because even if you don't feel like praying, just spend time with Him and He get, still talks to you. In And I just feel talks to everybody in a different way. Yes. That's the multifaceted God that we have. And for me, that's the way He does. Mm. So whenever you get up in the night and you don't, you just feel down, just go sit somewhere. And ask God, Holy Spirit, give me something of hope. And the one time, um, I don't know what was going on, but we went through so much of hell. And I couldn't sleep. And I just go sit in my normal place on the floor, because I love to sit on the floor and pray. And I just sat there and I said to God, I need help. Because <laughs> I don't know what to do, how to fix right. the, the turmoil that goes inside of you. And I just sat there. And oh, you heard me the one day. That was before you went to bed. Right. And I started to come just... To speak to God, just give me direction, and I started to pray in a completely different tongue. I have never in my entire life prayed in. So you can speak in more than one tongue, by the way. Yep, yeah, you can. Especially in our church. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but it was so amazing because I started to speak this incredible language, mm. and I was just bursting out in tears and just rolling down my face, and it, it's almost like everything inside of me was offloaded at an altar. Mm. In, like I'm sitting in front of the altar, and I put everything on there for God. 
And the next moment, I feel this hand like this on my shoulder. And I just got up and looked around and there was nobody. And then God, Jesus took me to the scripture where Jesus was in the wilderness. And he needed prayer when he was going through his storm. And an angel came and he supported him in his prayer. And that is, I think, something we miss in the midnight hours. We sleep instead of getting up. Mm. And the whole world is asleep and everybody in the house is asleep to have that intimate moments with God. Wow. Where it touches you like you have never in your entire life has. And all you can do is just thank you, God. And, you know, thank you. And it's that incredible praise that you get and the thankfulness that's just, it's like it completely goes up to heaven. Absolutely. Because you, you, yeah. you see your, your fragrance, the fragrance of your worship begins to permeate the atmosphere. The, listen, even when you cry, in the middle of your brokenness. <laughs> Never underestimate. See, people can't tell you don't cry. When you're, going to, when you're feeling the pain and the burden of the challenges, nobody can tell you you shouldn't be crying. If you wanna cry, cry it out. If you wanna go through stuff, go through the stuff that you need to go through. But when you are done crying, say, Lord, I'm so broken, I'm so hurt, the tears don't stop running, but I'm just gonna say, I love you, Father. I thank you, my Father, for where I am. I thank you that you got this, Lord. See, Job said, even when he lost everything, he said, even though the Lord slay me, yet will I trust in him. So Job said, Lord, I don't know what to say anymore. And he obviously thought, you know, God, you are, you are doing all of this to me. And, and so he says, even though the Lord slay me, yet will I trust. In other words, even though my mind blame, want to blame God, yet will I trust in him. Even though my flesh wants to be angry at God, yet will I trust in Him. But it's not, you're not supposed to be angry at God. You're not supposed to. We get to. so angry at the world mm. and we often blame God for the things that we don't know how to deal with. Yeah. But then, whenever you go to the next level, you are going to get a little bit of hell. Because the devil, <laughs> every time you get a new revelation of God, the devil come and stop it. And we spoke about it so much this week. Yeah. Every single time. I mean, on Sunday, we had the most most unbelievable worship we have ever experienced in our entire life in our church. Mm. It was ridiculously, unbelievably unexplainable. And it all started with one specific song. And that instance, it was a song to literally give God praise, let it rain. Mm. And it, it's almost like you could feel the rain falling from the, the roof of the church on you. And almost everybody was emotional, but everybody was just praising God at the same time. Yeah. And it, it reminds me that a lot of times in the midst of a storm, we always forget God is with you in the storm. And if He's not, if, if he's not leaving you and let you walk alone in the yeah. storm, it says in Psalms 23, and Holy Spirit always tells us week by week, He leads you. Mm. So wherever you walk, as long as you walk in the footsteps where Holy Spirit takes you, mm. you're going to have no problems. You're going to have no problems at all. You just got to listen to Him. Praise Him and worship Him, spend as much time in prayer and the worship. Right. And it's like you just walk slowly through this whole thing and you just see the whole world rumbles around you. But in this tiny little place of ultimate peace, you find God. And it's like today I was just sitting outside and we just got some very interesting news today. We call it interesting. <laughs> so I just sat outside and I just said, God, you know, this is what I need. And I got three songs from somebody and it was so spot on. And the person did not know anything, but the songs were so spot on to comfort my soul. Mm. And that is what we don't know. We don't, and, and that's why it says you have to love. Because if, if somebody else says, I'm going to pray for you, and they actually go and they pray, they will get the exact same counsel they need to sing. And I love worship songs. I always yeah. found so much of advice in my worship songs. And from there on, the worship songs come from the Word. So you, you pull it out. And the song that God gives you to minister to you, go find the scriptures in the Bible. Mm. And you get all everything in there. Right. But it's just like, just sitting there and fight, find that peace today before we do the live streaming up. You know, God knows Absolutely. where we are. And he, sometimes I think He laughs at us. It's like, my children know I always take them through every difficult situation. <laughs> Why it, are they so worried? But it's, it's a natural right. thing to worry sometimes. But it's just finding that peace in the storm that... Nobody can take it away. No one can take away your peace. And I love that. And that peace yeah. comes from what? From worship. Worship. From just staying in the presence of God and staying yeah. in the Word of God. That's where the peace comes from. Yeah. See, family, we know that there's so many, hundreds of people go through, going through challenges daily. And every time we post something, you know, the 
you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that we post daily. My wife's involved with a lot of things of encouragement. You see, all of the things we post is a fragrance. We don't want to get into debates with people. We don't want to get into doctrinal issues with people. We don't, if people don't like what we're teaching and that's fine, we're never going to answer them. If people post something that they don't like about what we're saying, we're never going to answer them. You know, and, and it's, not, it's not like we get, get those kind of uh, comments, maybe one or two every now and then, but we don't have the time. I don't have the energy to waste on irrelevant opinions. I just want to do what the Lord has called us to do, and that is to encourage you to be a blessing to you so that you can get through every single day of your life and your focus is only on God. Your focus is in the word that you become the fragrance. And when we see the comments, we mention every name before God. When we post something and we see the even the like comments, we, we, we open it up and we see the names and we just say, Lord, we just bring these people to you and we name the names. And say, so, Lord, you know what they need. We will release a blessing on their lives that you will meet them at the place of the need, that you will encourage them and build them up in whatever they're going from, whatever church you belong to. We don't care. We just say, Lord, we bless these people. We release the love of God in their lives. Whatever they need, you will see them through uh, uh, whatever season they're going through because that's what we want to do. We want our prayers for you that's watching, listening, commenting to come up as a fragrance before God. That's how special you are to God. So even though people may not like us, even though people may not like you, even though people may not agree with you, that's fine. Don't waste your time trying to defend yourself. That's not a fragrance before God. God will defend you. Don't waste your time trying to justify yourself if people have a wrong opinion about you. God will sort it out. Family, here's what you need to do. Make sure that you focus on you being the fragrance. Yes, some comments might hurt. Some messages might not be so nice. Some, the some hurt, things. The hurt goes away during your worship. During your worship. <laughs> it gets easier. All the time. It is just, just, I know a lot of people like to sleep at night, but the mm. time when there's no kids running in the house, there's no phones, there's no computers, it's just a little place with, a, and I put all the lights on. I just have my phone playing with my music. Mm. So I can't, my eyes don't dwindle and look at all the things. And if I don't see it, it won't bother me. Yeah. So I just sit in the dark with my phone and it literally like the whole world disappears. Yeah. It is so important for people to understand that the time that you spend with God and the worship, how it's almost like um, a painkiller or something. Mm. It, it's, it's literally in a few minutes that you're into the worship sessions, it suppresses the devil like you cannot explain it. Yeah. It is it is, just... It's a beautiful moment. So so when, when, when Pastor Shemaine is busy in her quiet time in the early hours of the morning, middle of the night, I, you know, I get up sometimes and I know that you know she's not in the room she's out there worshiping praying whatever and so so I don't come out because she's got all the lights out and, and she'll get she'll get scared <laughs> especially in load shedding especially in load shedding I have to smile my way towards her so she can see my teeth she won't see me with my brown skin <laughs> but I, I just say that to, to make you laugh because I think some of you are getting too serious now but listen to what we just said listen yeah. to this, this principle when your offering is a sacrifice in the middle of a crisis, it becomes a sweet fragrance of Christ in the presence of God. So your worship in the middle of a crisis is a sacrifice. Your praise is a sacrifice in the middle of your crisis. Your tears are a sacrifice in the middle of your crisis. So whatever it is that you're going through, bring your worship before God. Let it become a fragrance of Christ. In other words, it's the fragrance of the anointing that keeps me connected to my Abba Father. It's the fragrance of Jesus Christ that keeps me connected to Abba Father because I worship Him in the midst of my crisis. I worship Him when my bank account is empty. I worship Him when people turn their backs on me. I worship Him when people stab me in the back, when people talk about me and people let me down. So what am I doing? My focus is on my Father. My focus is on God because Jesus Christ is the fragrance that is a beautiful scent in the presence of God. So the fragrance of Christ that we are talking about tonight is what comes out of your lips of clay, what comes out of your heart. Because when you begin to uh, uh, give off the sweet fragrance of worship, that's a sacrifice when you're going through a tough time. So when you're offering, 
is a sacrifice in the middle of a crisis. It becomes a sweet fragrance of Christ in the presence of God. So whether it's a sacrificial financial offering when you don't have much to give, whether it's a, sacrifice, a sacrificial praise when you are going through the toughest time of your life, whether it's a sacrificial worship when everybody has let you down, no matter what it is you're going through family, you remember that you must give up a sacrificial offering unto God. And when, the, when you make that sacrifice, God will never turn His back on you. Because when you don't know what else to do, when you feel like you ha you're all alone in the middle of your storm, the best thing to do is just close your eyes and worship God. Close your eyes and just worship God. Close your eyes and just let the fragrance of your worship come before God. Don't worry about who's for you and who's against you. Just let that fragrance come out of you. We, um, sorry. I actually have a group of ladies that um, are up in the middle of the night. So we will more or less have the same hours that we all have been praying. But when we find a specific worship song, we'll send it to one another. Mm. And it's amazing how everybody's differently touched with the songs that we sing to one another. Yeah. Everybody's got a different revelation, but everybody has found a way of comfort out of that. And it's actually nice <laughs> if a lot of you can also do the same. Find somebody like a prayer partner, but it's like a worship partner. Yeah. I don't know what we call our group, but we just love doing that. Just send on worship songs to different people. And this week somebody said to me that they were just asking God. They also started with the worship night. They just asked God, I need some new songs because I've out listened to my songs now. Mm. And the next morning somebody randomly posted three songs to her. And it's that's how it is. That's how God <laughs> listens intently to every single thing we do and what we say. And... I find the most amazing, this week we found one song that was unbelievable, the one mm -hmm. we played in the car. Yes. And that I found in my worship Beautiful. night in the middle of the night. I hardly ever find songs in the day. Mm. I found this powerful worship song that literally changes the entire atmosphere, always in my prayer time. Mm. So I was, most of the time I'll just share it on Facebook if that ministered to me because I know there's somebody else that's going to click on it and God's going to put a fragrance from that song to them as well. And from one person it goes to the other, it's like a chain reaction. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to say to the praise and worship teams, people who are anointed with their voices, our praise and worship team, many of you are watching tonight, Pastor Iris, Pastor Sio, uh, Angelique, uh, Angelique um, Jasmine, Steffi. I want to say to everyone who is anointed, you have a voice that is anointed for worship. You will be greatly challenged <clears throat> because... Your worship, your praise, gives off a fragrance. You are anointed for praise. What you spoke in the car about? Remember what I told you in the car. Go ahead. <laughs> we you tell me a lot of things. <laughs> we drove for six six hours. Okay, I only slept four hours. <laughs> <laughs> but we were actually discussing worship and the fragrance that it has, and it's amazing how worship kind of opens up the the atmosphere. For others because they like on the forefront of, of what's about to happen because if I listen to a worship song I get blown away with it because every like somebody can send me a song two months later I will send it back to you because I found this nice song right. and they said you know I sent it to you two months ago hmm. so I did, it didn't touch me that time but a specific time specific song speak to me right. and I noticed the one that we found this week is for you and me personally yes. was an incredible Definitely. point of strength so there's How a season for everything. So sometimes I use that to sing to people, to encourage them, that the Holy Spirit leads me to sing. Absolutely. But when we spoke and we go through the mountains, the beautiful mountains that you don't like, yes. we were having this image of the worshipers right in the front of the church, if I explain it right. Mm. And they, they put out the worship, and it's the same like Joseph, that they worship and prayed, and that is how God released the armies. Because right. the fragrance <coughs> of the worship and the praise ignited everything else and helped them to win the battle right my favorite thing but that's what we discuss it's the power of worship and in our that's church it. some of the ladies i will actually give them assignment and said see how many scriptures you can find in one worship song and one of the girls came back and she found 36 scriptures on one worship song mm, absolutely. 36 scriptures wow. and that is the power of worship because when you worship God you are actually taking the Word of God and you're singing it with praise uh, yeah. into the atmosphere and it just um, it gives a yeah one of the words for incense is uh, 
description is fumigation. Yes. It actually, like you will fumigate all the bugs in the house, the worship fumigates the atmosphere. Absolutely. So it's only you and the Holy Spirit, whatever is lingering, whatever sadness, depression, it completely disappears with your totally. worship because that's why incense of your worship is also called fumigation. Absolutely. That's what I learned this week. So, so, so what you're doing <laughs> yeah. is, is like, like we're doing now with, with the, the COVID and the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, you know the requirement is that you've got to sanitize the church building before people are allowed in so we bought the equipment and all of that to fumigate literally or to sanitize they use the word sanitize just to make it sound you but what you're doing is fumigate. fumigate so you're pumping yeah. these chemicals into the atmosphere which is safe by the way that's what they tell us but you're pumping into the atmosphere and you're sanitizing the atmosphere you're fumigating the atmosphere to kill the germs in that to atmosphere. kill the germs they say right so our worship does that it kills the demons <laughs> our worship arrests every foreign demonic spirit and stops it in its tracks and that is why when you come out of worship you feel like you've conquered the entire world oh. because every ugliness that's attached to you before you go into the prayer room or the secret room Mm. Yes. <laughs> in our new books it's all coming out yes, yes. <laughs> but if you go into this secret room that is your alone time with God not you and your husband but I believe this, that's your alone time when you connect to God and that Absolutely. is when all of these amazing things happen because it's that one on one with God and that comfort to know God I come with all my baggage I need to offload it onto the altar and <laughs> it's like we get up there and you, I mean, there's nights that I can't sleep. And I say, okay, Holy Spirit, I understand. I need to get up. And I'll be so tired. I'll sit and I'll only yawn for like 10 minutes. And then I'm into prayer or in worship and the tiredness leaves. Because <laughs> yeah. you will always be tired when it's time to pray or worship. It's a normal pattern of the devil to make you just don't want to do that. But it's like just a few minutes after you're into the worship, you'll see two hours have passed and you have no idea where the time is gone. <laughs> And you get up there with yep. this big smile and you know all the garbage is dumped back into hell. With yep. it, all, this, all this stuff is returned back to sender. Yes, absolutely. We don't mind any of your, any of your stories. Uh, yeah. I was just thinking of, of a couple and I don't want to mention any names because they're related to me. But I was thinking of a couple that, that, prays, that prays together. And the husband, every time they kneel down and pray at the bed, he falls asleep and he starts snoring in the middle of the prayer. And then the wife... <laughs> The wife would say, what's wrong with you? Why are you sleeping? <laughs> it's like, uh, no doll, I'm not sleeping. I'm praying in tongues. <laughs> now you just gave it away. <laughs> snoring in tongues. You're snoring in tongues, having dreams and visions while you're praying. But your fragrance, why don't we go on to that topic now? But the, but the fragrance of your worship. Like, can you imagine somebody snoring? What are you doing? Why are you sleeping? I'm praying in tongues. <laughs> I don't know what kind of tongues that is to pray through your nose, but <laughs> praise the Lord. So it's that kind of sacrificial worship that is so precious unto God. When you bring that kind of worship in the middle of your crisis and that becomes a sweet fragrance of sacrifice that is pleasing to the Abba Father, it's pleasing to God. And that's what you want to do, precious family. You want to bring your worship before God because worship is so, so important to God. You know, when when... Uh, we first met and I would always have worship playing in my home and there's certain songs that I would love and you know it's, it's really so my wife used to tell me oh my goodness she says this is graveyard music oh, gosh. and today she cannot get enough of worship she loves worship all the time and I just think back and remember when you used to tease me and now look at you but your music so was very old oh my goodness well I still love those old anointed songs it's not like this the, some of these songs today where it blows up your eardrums. I mean, you know these young people, you jump in the car and you just want to move the car out of the garage and, and that music is blossoming. It gives you like a heart attack. It happens to me all the time when I jump into somebody's car just to move it, move it, you know. <laughs> I like my car. I've got it at the, right, at the right level. You know, jump in there, stop the car and this thing just blur, you know. It is loud. It just like deafens you and it gives you, you a heart. You think the worship in heaven is going to be soft like your music? Uh, I think you'll be on that side where it's loud. I'll be on the other side where it's soft. <laughs> but it's that kind of sacrificial <laughs> worship that is so precious mm -hmm. unto God. Because when you are, you know, you, you're all worn out. You're all beat up. You, you've been through so many challenges, one or the other. It seems like all oh, hell's broken loose against you. And all you can do is just come before God and sing your own song. God loves it. See, it, I love it. I love, I love walking on the beach. 
when we when we take a break like this, I love coming on the beach. Now we should be taking a break, but still we want to minister to people. We still want to <laughs> be able to pour into your lives and and connect with people and say, you know what? In the middle of of our little getaway and ministry trip, at the same time down the coast, we still want to bring the word of God to you. We still want to encourage you. It's our day, joy. We somehow make people that come to us and we start talk about God. Yeah. The hairdresser today, the lady at the beach last night. Yes. Yes. Oh, we just so yesterday always, we saw some, yeah, we're just ministering to people wherever we go, just being a blessing to people, talk to people, encourage them. People need some encouragement. They need some love. So what do we do? We are bringing up the fragrance of the anointing to encourage one another and be a blessing to one another. And yet in the background, every one of us are going through major challenges. Every one of us are going through stuff, but in the middle of what we are going through, we're bringing out a fragrance of But worship. that is the best time to do it. The best, the best time, time you feel down is the best time to encourage somebody else. Yes. That lifts you up. When somebody else, when you feel like you're in the middle of the dumps or whatever, just send messages to whoever you know is going through and you start encouraging them. And in the yeah. same way, God says, always, we always have to love one another. And that is also showing the love of God unto them. It's so true. And it's a contagious because yeah. that people that always receive that in to start to doing that to somebody else. So, so the way you want to get back at the enemy that brings challenges is in the middle of your worst circumstance, encourage somebody. In the middle of the worst challenges, encourage somebody. And you get back at the enemy. You, you, you just put another nail right through his forehead. You, you, just, you just do what you need to do to encourage somebody in the middle of whatever you're facing. Because remember that every single sacrifice that you have made in your lifetime becomes the fragrance of Christ in the presence of God. It becomes a fragrance of Christ every single time you made a sacrifice to praise God. It, it cost you to worship God. It cost you to give an offering. It cost you to get up in the middle of the to night, get up in the middle you're of the tired night. and you just want to sleep. Yes. It's a sacrifice that you make. And God's not going to forget it. God's not going to ignore you. God's going to honor you because you took the time to, to bring that sacrifice. Tonight is a sacrifice for us yeah, to be able, it. but we love doing it. <laughs> But it's a sacrifice to, to, to bring the word. It's a sacrifice to arrange things and arrange your life so that you can bring a word to somebody that will be encouraged. So if you are encouraged, would you let us know? If this message has blessed you, would you just let us know so we can be encouraged to know, you know, what you're doing is so needed. What you're, what you're saying is so encouraging. Mm -hmm. And share it with people. Share the live streaming once it's up and, and, and running and it's complete. Just share it with everybody. All your friends and invite them to be a part of listening to a message where there's no condemnation. There's no looking at you and saying, well, because you did this and this and this, this is why this is happening to you. Listen, we bring in a message of hope. Excellence International Ministries is about bringing you to a place where you understand that your relationship to Abba Father is so important. Jehovah God Almighty is such an amazing God that He will never leave you the way you are. So let's. The fragrance of your sacrificial offering will always come before God as a memorial of your faith in troubled times. Let's say that again. The fragrance of your sacrificial offering will always come before God as a memorial of your faith in troubled times. So the fragrance of your sacrificial offering will always come. Remember now, if you just joined us, we're not talking about money. We're talking about even when you, when you don't have much in your bank account and you give a little offering, that's fine. But we're also talking about when you don't know what to say, but you worship God anyway. When you don't know how you know, to, to give thanks to God, but you praise God anyway. And you just lift up your hands and you worship. See, all of those things are sacrificial offerings that, that becomes the fragrance of Christ. So the fragrance of your sacrificial offering will always come before God as a memorial of your faith in troubled times. Heaven does not reject a sacrificial offering. Heaven does not shut its doors to a sacrificial offering. It comes also, up as a memorial. It doesn't matter where you've been in your life. It doesn't matter what mess you made last night. Today is a new day. Start afresh. And the grace of God starts up. That's what I love about the midnight prayers. Yes. Because just um, before I always get up, if I sleep, I will get up 10 to 12 and I'll pray from 12 to 2 or 3 o'clock that time. But I will always get up 10, 10 minutes before 12 
have a quick cup of coffee and then I'll start praising the people, everybody that I know and the church, bless their marriages, bless their business, bless everything before we enter into the new day. Yes. Yeah. So you, when they wake up, we go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but at least they get up with a different uh, feeling of victory yes. because somebody else has taken the time to pray for, to pray for them. them. It's so important yeah. to bring other people before God. It's so important to pray for strangers, pray for people you don't know, uh, be a blessing to somebody, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. And, you know, like we, we yesterday we were here and the, and the lady came in to clean, um, you know, and, and she was, she, she had such a good attitude. So we just gave her a little seed of blessing and she was so blessed. Today we were on the beach and the guy was selling uh, uh, fish nets and, and, you know, what spades and buckets. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. In, yeah, and, and, and so he said, please buy something, you know, uh, uh, I'm so hungry, I just want to buy something. To so we just took out some money and gave it to him. I said, don't worry about it. I said, just, you know, let, let's just bless uh, 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 bless you with it. And he was so blessed. What, what are we doing? Everything we're doing, every sacrifice we're making is a fragrance before God. And God will honor that in due season. God will look down upon that. And God will begin to pour out a blessing upon your life in the right season. But something amazing happened with me last week. I always love to sew. Every week I've got to sew something. So we went to get a few clothes for Shasadia because uh, my daughter didn't have enough clothes for the trip. She just outgrew it in the last week. <laughs> kind of yeah. a bit too fat. But um, I'm standing there and while they're trying to help me, there's a guy uh, standing behind me. He's got like a little packet of cookies, but he's literally counting out the scents. And I just thought, no man, this is wrong. So he was trying to count all the little bit of money just to pay for the packet of cookies because it's the only thing he could buy to eat. So I just said to the guy, um, is that for you? And he said, yes. I said, no, it's fine. I'll pay for it. And then it's like almost like something says, you know, just make something different. Just take a chocolate and another packet of cookies. It was literally like 12 rand. Mm. But the guy stood there, didn't want to leave because he said, nobody's done this. Yeah. He was so shocked that somebody will bless him with something. And I said, you know what, just thank God. So at the same time, you honor God by doing that. And if it's a small seed, it's fine. But what happened then is the guy, the manager was standing at the shop, helping, coming closer because now he says, what happened? This <laughs> never happens. And he was like shouting in the shop. <laughs> he was so excited. I said, then why are you going to church? He says, yes, I was brought up in church and I'm still in church every single day. I have wow. a moment. I never miss it. That's and he word. said to me that I believe before you receive, you've got to learn to give out before you receive. And amazing? this was a Catholic guy. And that is what we love doing. A small thing like that, you minister the word. It's and you give God the glory because every bit of money we get, we, we take as a, a gift from God. And yes. we always believe whatever we get blessed with something, we got to bless out. Amen. And a small thing like that gives God so much of glory. And that the faces of these people... The two people at the other cashier came to us to see what's happening. And he was like standing so for us. I said, no, not today. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just so precious to see how you touch one specific person, how he spirit told you to impart. And he left there with a seed in his heart mm. that somebody cared for me and somebody blessed me with something. And this guy was like so starving. Absolutely. Yeah. So let your fragrance permeate your atmosphere. Because the fragrance of your sacrificial offering will always come before God as a memorial of your faith in troubled times. God will remember. God has not forgotten you. God will not reject you. And let the fragrance of Christ permeate your atmosphere in everything that you bring before God. Let God be the main focus in the midst of every challenge. Just call Him Abba Father. Call on His name. Call on His name in worship. Call on His name in praise. Call on His name when you're down and out. Call on the name of Abba Father. Call on the name of Jehovah. The anointing, the fragrance of Christ is so important in your daily growth and walk as a born-again Christian. So precious family, we want you to know that we love you. And we really, with all our hearts, we care about everybody that watches. We care about our church family deeply. We love you deeply and, you know, we celebrate the ones that are faithful and loyal, that stay with the vision and walk with us through the journeys of life. Because being a pastor requires a team of people. Being a leader requires a team of people. Being a business owner requires a team of people. 
Why? Because we have visions and goals to accomplish. And without you, we would not be able to do what we're doing with so much of joy. So thank you to all of those watching tonight. All of our and all of our <laughs> in Christ.